some of us feel a pull towards the stars. Something deep we can't explain. If this is you, and if you feel it as well, then you'll find the right place. In June 2002, I had a close encounter. The Fermi Paradox is the conflict between the lack of direct evidence that they exist and the high estimates for their existence. Perhaps we wouldn't recognize them if we saw them. Or perhaps there is indeed limited clandestine contact between us and them. Perhaps they don't exist. Yes, they appear in TV and film, but these are fictional. Perhaps in this far corner of a tiny Catholic nation, we're just too remote. I received the first account from my brother that evening. He told me there were strange visitors in Killy Bags. My brother made passing reference to their clothes and manner, but the key detail he shared is that they were definitely American. Their voices were strange, but they could mask their American accents. I needed a first-hand report, although I'm not sure why. My plan was to visit my brother at work, and then something? It was all I had to go on. Although I had never visited him like this before, so... It was highly suspicious. I imagine everyone in Killy Beggs was having similar conversations that night. Thankfully, there had been no signs of altercation. The visitors had money, and that must have made the difference. Everything I know is Killy Beggs. A small fishing town on the northwest corner of Ireland. You only arrive here by accident. Was this an accident? They were spotted during the day observing the boats and taking pictures. At 2.15pm, along the Main Street footpath between Gallagher's shop and McGinley's pub, I saw them. Right there, I recognized the visitors immediately. Did the visitors know how obvious they looked? They acted as if they just didn't care. Could I say something? What could they tell me? Now, I wanted to be a human boy. I wanted, I wanted to be fixed. fixed. I imagine if you look into the depths of a wormhole where light bends and warps, you can see all of time at once. Maybe you can see yourself reflected. All time and space are one. Seconds later, they were gone. When I was a kid, I wanted to be an alien. I thought every boy did, but you just didn't say it. I got a little older and I realized I was wrong. I was wrong to feel this way. These feelings don't go away. Oh, yeah? We'll see.
hard to look and act human. When I returned to my brother's pub, he was waiting to interrogate me. What did I think? Did I find them funny? Did I get a kick? My head was still racing. Play it cool. Who? Oh yeah, I think. I gotta go. I had no coherent thoughts, except that I could not discuss anything. I knew that well enough. It was dangerous. If I was going to pass as a human boy, it would take a lot of practice and a lot of effort. Update. Aliens debunked? The claim that aliens are real. Many times in the last few years, I've even recognized moments when our roles in the story were swapped, when strangers at parties wanted to hang out with me for as long as they possibly could, and talked and talked as if staring through their own wormhole. They might not understand either, but they feel something. A ripple. Contact. Ripples affect ripples. Entropy increases, and the universe becomes ever richer. The two beings I saw, or didn't see, weren't saviors from another planet. Just two visitors on a wee rainy holiday to Donegal. I hope they had a nice time. I hope they recorded signals to remember. I wish I could send a signal backwards through that wormhole. Some way to tell myself that I don't need to try so hard to be something I'm not. That aliens are cool, and normal, and boring, and fun. But time and space are one. Fact check. It's 20 years later. I don't know if any of this actually happened or if I invented it. And honestly, it doesn't matter either way. It was always going to happen. Time and space are one. I did gain one indisputable data point from my encounter though. I finally had proof. I finally knew the we are not alone. Verdict? True. Laura McGee, alien investigator.